Uh, hi there guys, uh, today we're just going to see how we can uh, uh, retopologize a um, model or a sculpt done inside ZBrush. Um, as I already mentioned previously by you now guys, uh, um, there are several ways to do this. You can actually retopologize inside ZBrush, you can retopologize inside Maya now, I think from Maya 2016 onwards I think you can do it or 2015. Um, but normally what I do is I normally uh, use a little piece of software that we have here called uh, Topogun. Uh, we have installed Topogun here on in both of the labs and um, and I think it's a very easy software to learn. All what you have to do is just turn a couple of keys and, and, and you'll be okay with that. Um, few tools, very powerful, very easy to learn and you can quickly, artistically, you can create your models um, very fast. Now, in order to do that, we need to import in, Z in Topogun a uh, uh, decimated um, model. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, what do I mean by uh, decimated? What I mean by decimated is that normally when you do a sculpt inside ZBrush, you know, uh, you know that we're talking about millions of polygons, millions, sometimes five, six, seven million polygons in normal sculpt these days. But if you bring seven million polygons, even to Maya or any other software, most likely it's going to crash because the viewport might not be able to handle this. But ZBrush is quite good, you know. ZBrush is quite efficient when it comes to memory um, uh, management so you can have 7 million polygons in the viewport at 32 bit and it still runs with no problem but uh, in order to use uh, ZBrush, uh, Topogun in this case sorry uh, we are um, we need to have a, a something called a reference and that reference is pretty much a l sort of low res version of the high res but it's been decimated which means that uh, ZBrush runs a um, algorithm through it and it pretty much uh, discards all the extra polygons that you don't need and it still preserves the shape of the uh, model so something that normally is uh, five six seven million polygons you can knock it down to about eight hundred thousand you still keep the shape and that is what is called um, uh, retopolo um, uh, decimation so now normally the decimation is is here is 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 located here within this uh, menu entry the set plugin here there is um, all the plugins that come with uh, uh, ZBrush. We have here one called the Decimation Master. The Decimation Master here, obviously we need to have something loaded up here in order to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, Load Tools and I'm just going to go for here a file called Jack. The good old Jack that we've been working on. I'm just going to draw it there, press Edit and I'm in 3D mode now. If you, by the way, guys, you see my UI here. That is a bit different because I, I customize my UI. I mean, putting here the stuff that I normally use. You can do that yourself if you want. Inside, um, if you go into um, uh, Pixelogic.com, you can you can find a tutorial that tells you how to do um, uh, your um, um, customization of the UI in ZBrush. Very easy to use. Um, probably in the other course, digital sculpting that I will be teaching, I will probably cover that already with the students, but. Mm, it's a good thing to have a look. Just go into pixelize.com and find out some of the tutorials about that. Now, right, okay, so I got here at this point, but obviously, as you can see here, if I press in polyfill, you can see that this one got really good topology because I already done all the process, but I'm just going to ignore that I got this and I'm just going to have this thing that we just got this model, this subtool, and this subtool is, uh, um, let's put it back all the way up, it's about a few million, it's about 5 million polygons, 4.4. 99 million polygons there's something you will have something like that and most likely when you press this button here you will have a lot of pinching and things like that you will not probably have these little nice clean lines there because like I said this has already been retopologized but we're going to use this for um, the purposes of this training so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decimate this so I'm going to just going to delete that so literally you will have only this you will not have any um, nothing in it. So most likely like this, something like this with no levels. So just 4.499 million polygons, and that's it, or whatever you have the amount here, depending on your model. You will be working with this using Dynamage, whatever tools you use to reach this point, then you're gonna start working on your retopologizing. Like I said earlier, you can do it inside here, you can do it in Maya, but for me, I think, for you guys, I strongly advise you just use Topogram. It's very easy to use. So, like I said, in order to have to use Topogun, we need to have a, a low, uh, a sort of low res version of this high res version that still keeps the shape, but.
by something more manageable so about 20 30 percent of this which is about 800,000 in the past I have used up to a million polygons in Zion um, a Topogun and it has worked fine now the software that we have here the Topogun is a 64-bit version which can handle a lot but I think I've used 1.5 before and it was a bit flaky it could crash in a minute so something like this if we could reach it to about 800,000 easily we could work on this so how do we do that so in order to do that we just go into the set plugin we load up the uh, decimation master and there is a two-stage process here first we need to pre-process the current which is this tool that we have we can do it all of them but we're just going to work on one at a time if that's what we want to do there if you have anything else that you will go sub tool by sub tool and then you will do every single one of them but at the moment I just want to work on one and I say I'm going to pre-process the current the current uh, tool what it does is pretty much load up this in memory and you have it ready for you so you can have all the data or the metadata necessary for you to um, um, decimate this uh, uh, character so if I say pre-process current and it's going to go up it, it shouldn't take long it should take a few few seconds no more than 20 30 seconds I think so just give us a second for that you can see the part here it's going up it's processing and it's it's fairly good right now uh, it's being pre-processed now so it's all in memory whatever or cache and file or something so we have all the information necessary for set brush in order to uh, do all the decimations now this is a funny thing that we, we need to keep an eye on this because if I zoom in here like that and then I uncheck this button the polyframes you can I want to see uh, for example for this for this model is not that crazy because there's not much um, um, detail because obviously this was as you can see in my demo reel this character has been covering in fur so there's no point in having um, a lot of muscle definition or stuff like that so it's not necessary any of that but you can see here for example this model here it got a fairly amount of detail here you can have you can see the vent you can see like the shape the basic form of the muscle this here um, if probably a nose would be a better place to do that probably if I have a look at the nose as well so the nose got a little bit more detail here so if I go back into set plugin and I say uh, just give me 20% of this model so this second stage that we say we just have 20% or you could just use it by the polygons or the points or whatever but normally just say 20% and it does the best to calculate it to reach that 20% target so you said give me that 20% and you said decimate current so just keep an eye for example on this bit here the nose so you say decimate current seems like nothing happened you see the model is pretty much exactly the same hardly hasn't changed any shade you can still see the little wrinkles here and there um, very good um, you can still see the veins you can still see the shape here and the form the ribs here so nothing has changed pretty much for some reason this resorts back to this horrible waxy uh, material but if I change it back to the skin shade this one here you can see now you can see that this sort of change, uh, sorry, s sort of stay the same. But if I click here the polyframe, you can see you see how the geometry change. So now all the geometry is being um, sort of like an algorithm and say, okay, so this is the shape. So I'm going to try to keep this shape. All this stuff is pretty much the same around here. So he will say, okay, um, uh, around here you see there's no point of putting more stuff here because he hasn't changed much so you're always trying to put the polygons where they should be and then the rest just ignore it so something that was 4.9 million polygons went down to about 800,000 and it's hardly any change so this model here is more manageable and this model here is the one that we're going to use as a reference inside um, uh, Topogon in the next chapter so what I'm going to do now once you have this I'm just going to go here and say export 
Uh, I'm gonna hear this directory. Uh, I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna call this uh, Jack uh, reference. Okay, and it's gonna be an OBJ because we just want an OBJ here. So we just want to export that. We say save, and we have saved the stuff that we just done here. Okay. Now, um, I'm not going to save any of this. What I'm gonna do is just gonna ignore the changes so I don't damage the original sub tool here. You could have done just make a copy here if you select this and you say just uh, duplicate and it give you an entrance so you got the original one but then obviously if you go higher the file will be bigger to save so I just um, decided not to do that but anyway we now got that um, low reference uh, sorry reference that we're going to load inside um, Topogun so uh, let's move on to that one alright thank you uh, just gonna close this 